Hi everybody. I'm here today to talk to you about how to identify birds by sight. Now one of the things that you can do is you could get yourself a book or a pair of binoculars or both and go out in the woods and try to find your way through the woods and find birds and look for them. But uh, it helps to know before you even start to do that some of the techniques that you're going to have to to master in order to be able to identify birds. So that's what I'm here mainly to talk to you about. However, if you feel like you have to get something or you'd like to have something, a good thing to get would be the Merlin Bird ID app, which is put out by the Cornell University's Lab of Ornitho Ornithology. It is free and uh, it's a great app. It will help you learn to identify things based on shape and size and everything. And it even has a feature that if you take a picture of a bird, if a bird is close enough, it will actually identify the picture. So that's a really, really cool thing to get. And it's free. So, and it's on your phone. You guys are seldom without your phone. So you'll have a, a bird app with you wherever you go. The Merlin bird app uh, works a number of different ways. You can see here from this picture, uh, this is the kind of screen that will open up uh, when you open the, the bird app. And it'll ask you about um, the size of the bird that you're seeing. Uh, is it, and it compares it to things that are fairly common, like a sparrow or a little, those little brown birds, uh, a robin, a crow, and a goose. And so, and then it's going to ask you colors and, uh, and so on and so forth. And it kind of helps you narrow down what that bird could be. But many of you do have some background with birds. You may not even have thought about it, but, uh, you know, birds are everywhere. And that's why we study them in field biology, because they are probably uh, the one animal that we see more of. And we can easily see them uh, as opposed to insects having to pull out hand lenses and stuff. We can see these birds fairly easily. And many of you probably look at this uh, silhouette. You probably have an idea. If you've been to the beach anytime soon, you, you've recognized this shape. This is a brown pelican, uh, a bird that we see along the coast here in Virginia. So shape is one thing that we can use to identify birds. Uh, here's another picture. And again, if you have some background, you might recognize in the lower left-hand corner, uh, the silhouette of a duck. And we have several species of ducks around here. Or if you've been a little bit more observant or have a little bit more background, you might recognize the bird on the side of the tree as being a woodpecker. Uh, and we have four or five species of woodpeckers around here. And in the top of the tree, you, you'll see that there's a, an owl up there. You might recognize that owl. And maybe you recognize some of the other things that are in this picture too. So shape is really a good thing to help. Now, when you go to look at birds and you, you're using a book, a lot of times it will talk about uh, features that you see, something that we call field marks. And they'll, they'll say, well, maybe it has a, a wing bar, or maybe it has a white throat, or a red breast, or a rufous crown. And so this is a generalized picture of a bird and what all those body parts are. Now, this is very, very general. Uh, if you want to go a little bit deeper, Here's a much more advanced diagram, but many of these things we really don't need to know. Like it's very seldom with the birds that you have to learn uh, that we need to talk about undertail coverts or upper tail coverts or scapulars or anything like that. We will talk about things like breasts and uh, mustache stripe, which is also called a malar um, and things like that. But um, so I'll probably post this somewhere so that you have a copy of it. So you have some idea of what the different parts are. Here's a look at wings. Um, again, we don't typically talk about secondaries. We don't talk about primaries often. Uh, if we ever learn uh, ducks, we might learn about speculum, which is that patch on the right wing that you see that's really dark, because that's one way we can identify ducks is by uh, speculums. So when we start to look at birds, if you're whether you're doing it with a book or with the Merlin app or just out in the field making note of things, one of the first things you might want to notice is what size is it? So we try to compare it to things that might be fairly common, like those little brown jobs, which are called sparrows. Uh, is it that size? That's, a, that's the smallest of birds. 
Uh, is it a robin sized bird, uh, which is a typical bird in everybody's lawn, so you might recognize that? Or is it crow size, those really large blackbirds? Or is it swan size or Canada goose size? We have a lot of Canada geese around here. Probably a day hardly goes by without seeing a Canada goose somewhere. We can also look at bills. Uh, bills tell us a lot about their lifestyle. If it's a really stout bill, like you see on, uh, say, the house sparrow at the top, it's probably a seed eater. If it's a hooked bill that you see in hawks and falcons and eagles, like the kestrel in the upper right, you can pretty much guess it's a raptor and that it tears apart its food, and it's usually meat that it's tearing apart. If it's got a very long straight bill or a slightly curved one way or the other, you can bet it's probably going out into the mud flats or in the sandy beaches and it's going through the sand and trying to find and probe and find things to eat. Like the snipe that you see in the uh, left hand side there, it's, it, you can see that in ditches around here sometimes in the winter looking for worms. And then of course we have the shoveler which is a duck and the heron which is going to spear fish. We can look at how it flies. Does it make a straight flight or does it undulate in its flight like a woodpecker would or like a, a American goldfinch will? But more than anything, we're gonna look at things like field marks. We're gonna look at those things that are very visible that are markings on it, like the white cheek of the Canada goose or the black crescent uh, under the throat of the uh, Eastern meadowlark. Or the uh, we might notice the junco uh, which looks just to be a gray bird above and white below, but it has two white stripes on either side of its tail when it flies away from you. So those are field marks. It could be wing bars. It could be any number of things. We'll also kind of look at what shape the wings might be. It gives you an idea of how fast the bird is. If the wings tend to be long and narrow and pointed, a lot of times those birds are really, really fast. We'll look at how long the legs are. A heron with its really long legs for wading in the water looks entirely different than a starling whose legs just allow it to walk around and try to look for food. So legs are a, a big deal in birds. Shape of the tail, which also gives us an idea of how they fly. Um, the red-tailed hawk at the bottom right has a very broad tail, which uh, allows it to soar. Uh, the swallow, uh, the swallow-tailed kite has a forked tail, as does uh, the barn swallow. Uh, so tails can tell us something about the bird. And as they fly, what kind of features do we notice? What kind of wing pattern do they have? Uh, are they, do they have a long tail? Do they uh, trail their legs when they fly? What kind of things can you see when they fly? How does it stand and move? move? You have a picture on the left of a, of a winter wren, and all wrens, regardless of whether it's a winter wren, a Carolina wren, or a house wren, they all cock their tail up just like that winter wren's doing. Uh, does it sit upright like that great horned owl? So when you go out and you're looking at birds, here's the key. Look at the birds as long as you can before you start looking at a book or looking at an app. You want to observe those birds and make notes uh, as, as to what you see before they disappear, because birds have a way of disappearing when you reach for the book. So while they're there and they're visible, uh, keep an eye on them, kind of see what you can see. What does the throat area look like? What does the head area look like? What do the wings look like? What does the tail look like? All of these things, make as many notes, mental notes as you can, and that'll help you when you finally do turn to the book. One thing that, that uh, birders do, and I do this, is I keep a field journal. Now, now, I don't keep one as detailed as the one on the right, but I do keep a journal every time I go out birding and I write down how many birds I see, uh, what kind of, uh, how many of each kind I saw, uh, how long was I out, how far did I walk, and I actually take this information and I put it onto a website that, uh, that keeps track of this stuff for, um, for scientists called eBird. Um, so, it, you might find yourself interested in wanting to do something like that as well. But most of all, when you go out to watch the birds have fun, that's what this is all about, is having fun. So uh, enjoy, uh, get outside. Uh, it's the best place to see birds, I, I hate to tell you. It's 
very hard to watch them inside, but have fun, go out and enjoy it and enjoy probably the fastest growing hobby uh, in the United States.